Though Destiny had a tough day with error codes, I think it's fair to say that the player base was also caught off guard by just how difficult the Legend version of Onslaught actually is. It's going to take a coordinated team and some decent strategy to get to level 50, allowing you to capitalize on double loot drops and guarantee yourself an exclusive emblem in the process. So today, I'll be covering 7 tips and tricks that will help you clear level 50 of Legend Onslaught, including the best scrap upgrades, damage strategies, and and so much more. I'm above, and if you enjoyed today's video, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Now, let's get into it. Diving into tip number one, we have weapon attunement. I've received a ton of questions surrounding this feature, so let's clarify a few things that will make your farming so much easier. You'll want to start by paying a visit to our site in the Hall of Champions, where you'll pick up the Stranger Danger quest for Elsie's rifle. Completing this quest gives you the opportunity to pick up additional weapon quests that, when completed, allow you to attune or focus a weapon of your choosing. As you can see here, after I attuned Edge Transit, in the Hall of Champions, the vast majority of my Onslaught drops were weighted towards the Grenade Launcher, and it even impacts the bonus chest next to Shax when turning in trophies, which makes the attunement extremely valuable. It's also worth noting that you can hold off on completing weapon bounties, which will prevent it from entering the loot pool until you have the god rolls that you're looking for. So before loading in, make sure to progress your quest until you can attune a weapon of your choice, and then farm to your heart's content. Moving on to tip number two, we have how to spend your scrap. Defense upgrades can really make a difference with your team's survivability, and investing in the right upgrades is extremely important when pushing into later rounds. I spent a concerning amount of time in Onslaught yesterday and tested each available upgrade and combination of defense units to try and figure out what's best for you guys. I initially thought that trip mines were the most powerful, but then I tested clones, and in my opinion, nothing even comes close. As long as you're somewhat competent with ad clear, the base level clone has the capability to draw enemy aggro and survive throughout a round. But as you upgrade this to level 2 and eventually level 3 for the maximum shacks upgrade, these clones have so much health that they can easily last all 50 rounds. I think we had just one shacks clone break during 3 full clears and it took some really unfortunate RNG for this to happen. They're extremely tanky and draw so much aggro from enemies that that it truly does feel like you have an extra member of your fire team. I can't stress enough that quality is far better than quantity in this game mode because these clones can last for an entire onslaught, which means that when we come back to a defense location later on, you'll still have that upgrade working for you 40 rounds in the future. And once you've got some clones up and running, you can supplement them with turrets and trip mines as some nice passive damage additions. So be smart about your upgrades from the beginning and you'll profit it long term in these longer battles. Tip number three spawn trapping enemies. You know the saying that the best defense is a great offense? Well, Onslaught epitomizes this concept and takes it to a whole new level. Enemy spawns are split into three separate areas for each ADU defense location, and these enemy spawns will happen in the same places over and over and over again. This makes it extremely easy to spawn trap enemies once you have them memorized, which in my opinion is far easier than letting them creep up on you and your ADU defense defense units from several different locations. It takes a bit of practice to balance playing aggressive without playing too risky, and finding spots like this window on Midtown that can help you lock down an entire enemy spawn point on your own. With that said, your builds and loadouts will obviously need to be on point for this to work, and though I wanted to focus on onslaught mechanics for this video, if you guys want to see my best recommended builds and loadouts in a follow-up video, definitely be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Tip number four, making boss phases easy. Onslaught is structured in a very predictable way. Every five levels, we have a portal mechanic where we must infiltrate a pyramid ship and ignite the spark, with every 10th level being a boss phase. This means we'll fight five bosses in total during our onslaught run, ranging from shriekers to wizards, ogres, and more. And it's important to come prepared with a DPS loadout that you can swap to each time. If you're set up correctly, you can literally just ignore the additional damage buffs and brute force your way through extra damage phases, even on legend. With that said, 
there's no rush here, so if you need extra time, don't be afraid to take cover and bake the boss from range. Once dead, there's a chance at a lightning round after each boss dies, in which case you'll want to leave your damage loadout equipped, as this encounter grants you mayhem levels of super regen until the lightning round concludes. With that said, you can tell a lightning round is not happening when you see the hostile forces grow in power on your screen. It is at this point that I recommend switching back to your ad clear loadouts for the oncoming waves and going back through the portal. And this transitions us perfectly into tip number five, which is using the portals wisely. Once the darkness portals appear, there's actually no time limit surrounding how quickly you must enter or exit said portal. This means that after a boss phase, we can swap to our ad clear loadouts and take as much time as we'd like scouring the arena for heavy ammo before exiting the portal. It's also worth noting that your fire team should all exit the portal at the same time, because when even one person heads back to the map, a 25 second preparation timer will start the second someone exits the portal. So if your teammates are busy checking their loot drops in the pyramid ship and you exit the portal early, you're actively eating into their prep time to spend on upgrades or search for ammo at previous defense locations. So be a good teammate and make sure everyone's ready before starting the next round. Tip number six is a quick one, but worth noting nonetheless. As we discussed earlier, the fifth round in a 10 round set is dedicated to igniting the spark, but it's not as easy as it sounds, because once you've grabbed the spark, the enemies in this room actually hit surprisingly hard, and the boss guarding the deposit is completely immune. So we actually found it easier to have a Banner of War Titan grapple over the enemies, or have an Invis Hunter dunk the spark without ever drawing aggro. This despawns the remaining enemies in the encounter, and makes this part completely risk-free. And last but not least, we have tip number seven, which relates to secondary objectives. Now, these are great for extra scrap and Shaq's reputation, but you should treat them just as they sound, which is a secondary objective. I've seen so many people go out of their way to try and capture mines or destroy splinters, only to die in a bad spot, which ends up compromising your team, spiraling out of control, and resulting in a wipe. Keeping the ADU safe should always be priority number one. With that said, one thing you should prioritize are these sky bombers that launch artillery at your base. You can tell this is happening when a massive orange beam rains down on the ADU and is shown as an augment under the wave number as well. You'll want to seek these enemies out to prevent significant damage while making sure you have at least one person defending the home base at all times. But with that said, I'm confident that with the strats we've discussed today, you guys will be slaying the secondary objectives and reaching level 50 50 in no time. Well guys, that's gonna do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into Onslaught and found these tips useful for you and your fire team. And if you did, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Also, be sure to swing on by the stream sometime because we'll be doing Onslaught runs with viewers all week long, so swing on by for a chance to get in on the dope new loot. Anyways guys, that's it from me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.